six, a helping hand with your land. You guys, Neil from Essex here. We're out in the shop today with a couple of oil filters, and we're going to have a short conversation about the construction of these things, how they're made, and some of the, the reasons why you might choose to run one filter over another. This video may not go the way that you expect, so stick with us here, and I hope you can hear the conclusion at the end. So before we start going through these things, I'm going to start by telling you I drive a Ford vehicle and there is not a Ford filter on my car. So uh, absolutely understand why guys make filter selections like they do. I'll, oftentimes it's about convenience more than anything else. Uh, but today we're going to go through and show some of the construction differences between these different filters. Uh, Napa seems to be the go-to place for many guys. Napa filters, if you're not aware, are made by Wix. Um, Napa sells these in a silver, platinum, and gold um, option, kind of a, a low, medium, and high tier product. Kubota, uh, this is their engine oil filter that's run on BX series tractors and most of the small machines. Um, only gives you one option under their part number. Um, the very first thing that I noticed when I was going through and doing these, I, I cut these open ahead of time and I really wish I would have recorded that. Um, if we go through and we pull these guys out, the cans themselves are surprisingly different. Um, I didn't notice a whole lot of difference when Cutting open the cans of the Napa filters, uh, they're all about the same, uh, but the weight and the gauge of the can on the Kubota is significantly heavier. Um, and what that gives you is crush resistance um, and also damage resistance because these things are dangling underneath the bottom side of your tractor. Um, you do see filters periodically when they become clogged for some reason and they don't bypass. The, the cans can kind of cave in under pressure. And so the heavier gauge can in the Kubota filter is gonna hold up a lot better than what the thinner gauge does in the Napa. Um, probably a little bit difficult to see right there, uh, but when I went through here with the filter cutter, literally I uh, two trips around the Napa and the cans came right apart, and I probably spent three or four minutes here to get myself through this one. You can see how I even bargained up the paint and stuff as I was spinning the thing around. So uh, definitely a lot heavier construction. On the inside of these things, we'll show you how the Kubota one is made here first. Um, on an oil filter, your oil is supposed to go down through the small holes on the outside and then return back through the big hole there on the inside. Um, so you'll see on the inside of here, the very first thing that you get is a, a O-ring on the top that's going to seat against your machine. And then on the inside of that's going to be another O-ring right here. Now this O-ring is in place so that oil doesn't flow through the can back up into your machine. You always want to have oil flowing in one direction through there. Once we're inside of that is the filter element itself. So the oil is going to come around the outside through the element and back up in again. And then on the inside of the can, you typically should always have a spring in the bottom in order to uh, provide pressure relief. So if this thing plugs up, it allows the, pre the filter to press down and the oil to bypass around the filter element. So those are the pieces that we're always kind of looking for inside of some of these. Now when you get into some really cheap filters, um, you'll sometimes find ones that don't have bypass springs in the bottom as a cost saving mechanism, um, and sometimes not even gaskets up here in the top. So uh, those are the basic parts. Now, as we go through these, I don't really actually know what's inside of here, so you're going through here with me. Um, so on the Napa Silver, okay, again, first thing we notice here, the can is a lot lighter. The holes in the top of this are actually a little bit bigger than the ones in the Kubota, so it might flow a little bit easier. The gasket material on the top is definitely a lot more stiff than what this is, so there's some differences there. And then we've got a bunch of adapter rings and stuff on the inside or filtering material and this one does have a spring in the bottom now if we look right here in the filtering material that should be pretty obvious of exactly which one is going to do a better job of filtering your oil so great if you want to use one of these that's uh, really should be changing it more often because the material that's in this is going to plug up a lot more quickly not only is it a lot smaller uh, it's basically the same diameter there's a lot less pleating in here as well so there's far more pleating in the Kubota than there is in the Napa Silver okay on to the next one um, a lot of guys I know like to run golds You'll see this top material looks like it's uh, made out of the same mold as what the one on the silver filter is, but the material of this gasket is a lot softer and more pliable. The underside of the cap looks like it's exactly the same. That's probably made out of the same thing. And again, really tiny little filter material with a spring in the bottom. So looking at these two guys here, 
about the same size, same amount of pleating, but not nearly as much as what is in the Kubota filter. And interestingly, these cans are almost exactly the same size. So there's just a lot less filtering capacity inside of that. Now I'll be curious here, now when we go to platinum, obviously you're getting a lot bigger filtering material in it. So the gaskets and everything, the bottom of the can, looks exactly the same as all the other ones. Um, bypass spring right here, and then a little bit more substantial filtering material, but you'll still see not nearly as much as what the Kubota one is. Um, either in pleating, there's a lot more pleating in the Kubota, um, and a lot more height and material in there. So it's gonna last longer, right? If you're not changing these things regularly, um, or you happen to scoot a couple of hours past your oil change interval, uh, this is definitely going to last a lot longer on your machine. So one of the reasons why we hear guys running other filters frequently is because there's a perception that OEM filters are really expensive. And there are absolutely some expensive OEM filters, right? Particularly hydraulic filters and stuff. There are specialty applications that are on very high turn pieces. They can be costly. Um, but in this case, actually, this one is fairly affordable. So this is the most common Kubota engine oil filter. We sell this for $8.74. Uh, the Napa Silver is going to be less expensive at $4.49. The Gold is $8.36 and the Platinum is $10.79. Now you can see here from the construction, my opinion, I don't think any of them are as good as what this one is. I think that's pretty obvious here, um, but they're not necessarily more expensive. Um, if you're ordering them online, Napa's base price for shipping is actually less than ours as well. They charge a minimum freight charge of $7.95 if you wanna have them shipped to your door where we start at $5.95 for our base freight charge for a small order. Uh, so that's a, a savings there as well. So you could actually go online and buy this Kubota filter for your tractor for less money than ordering one of these online from Napa. So all that said, kind of here's the surprising part. I, I'm not going to come out and necessarily tell you that 100% of the time in every circumstance, you should absolutely always, always be running OEM filters. Uh, what concerns me more than anything else is that you're running a good filter. Uh, there are obvious construction differences between these and differences in the filtering material and that kind of thing. Uh, the bottom line here is you do get what you pay for. When you pay less money for a filter, you are getting less filter. It's not that, you know, this thing is a, a $4 fantastic bargain. You, you've got less product here. Um, so what worries me more than anything else is when guys just don't run a good quality filter on their equipment. Um, we also sell Fleet Guard, which is owned by Cummins, and they make fantastic filters. It's good industrial filters for good industrial engines. Um, and their products are expensive. They're oftentimes more money than what our OEM filters are, but at the very least, it's a good product. Um, so running a good product on an expensive piece of equipment is really important. Um, there's also duty cycle concerns that we end up with these. You know, this, these cross-referenced filters are often put into a lot of different applications, right? You could spin one of these onto your minivan, right? And when you're running your van up and down the highway, you're only typically using about 20% of that engine's available capacity, right? The oil isn't spinning all that fast, it's filtering slowly and those kinds of things. When you spin a filter onto your tractor and you're running at high RPMs and you're lugging the machine, you're working that machine at 80, 90% of its available engine capacity. And so the duty cycles of these different filters are very, very different from each other. So it's important to choose a good filter for that reason. The final reason I'll give you to run an OEM filter is warranty concerns. Now, everybody is very aware a manufacturer cannot mandate that you use their filters and those kinds of things to remain in warranty. If they're going to do that, they actually have to supply them to you for free. So using another filter is not necessarily going to void the warranty on your engine. If there is a problem though, it does create a situation where one company is gonna be pointing fingers at another company to take care of a warranty repair. So now I can sit and say in this given calendar year, we have had five instances in our shop so far where we have had a failure with a Napa filter on a machine, on a fuel filter, on a particular engine with a common rail diesel, where that fuel filter is not filtering the fuel properly and it's blowing out common rails. Now, so what ends up happening is that we've got a Napa filter that's not spec properly for that engine on a, a given manufacturer's engine. And we can run into a situation here where the engine company is gonna point back to the filter guys and say, you should have never said that was okay on our engine. Um, we, we could create a lot of funny situations between these companies. I, I think from a customer perspective, there's a, a perception out there that filters never fail, and that's absolutely wrong. They do. We see hydraulic filters crush periodically. We see fuel filters not filtering right. There are filter-related issues out there in the industry. So particularly when you're under warranty, if you're sticking with the manufacturer's filter and there's a filter-related failure, there's nobody else to blame, right? And that, that small insurance for the extra couple of dollars that this thing might cost you, in my mind, is well worth the money because you're talking repairs that can go into the thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and a dollar or two for a filter to 
keep everything in house is really money well spent in my opinion. So that's a short conversation about filters. Um, obviously we wouldn't be sitting here making this video if we didn't have some uh, motivation behind it, right? Uh, we are obviously a tractor and equipment dealer who sells a lot of parts and filters and those kinds of things and we would like to have your business. Um, so this is the shameless plug here for us to ask for it. Um, if you want to give our parts guys a shout, we're available at 877-260-3528. That's a different phone number than you typically hear because it's for our parts hotline. Uh, that'll drop you straight into our parts department with the guys that are ready there to help you with any kind of filter needs that you have. So if we can help you, give us a call. Um, our website is also www.messix.com. So uh, catch you guys in the next video.